Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. As you saw during the intro, I have received my X50 upgrade for my Onefinity CNC machine. I'd like to thank the lovely folks at Onefinity of allowing me to be a beta tester and providing this to me to give everyone my thoughts on it. All right, so I am going to show you some of the features of this upgrade. I am gonna show you how to install it. It's very straightforward. I'm gonna show you how to tram the machine after you install it. And then I'll give you some thoughts on how I feel about the upgrade and after the initial use that I had of it. All right, let's go ahead and cut over to the features part of the video. So now I'm gonna walk through some of the features of the X50 upgrade for the Onefinity CNC machine. So obviously the largest feature of the upgrade are the 50 millimeter rails here. So like the original machine, there are two rails with the lead screw here. However, because of the additional size of the rails at 50 millimeters versus 35, like the original, you do not need the stiffy bar to get that extra degree of robustness on the Y and X gantries here. So that makes the machine a little bit shorter in that regard because you don't have this third rail here and then it doesn't interfere with some of the mechanical work that it did with the stiffy bar on top. The next feature of the X50 upgrade is the larger stepper motor here for the Y gantry. So this stepper motor pulls the same current as the original ones on the machine. However, it has more force and can apply more torque so you can actually cut faster in that Y direction. And so I think that's a nice upgrade for these bigger rail systems so you can cut a little bit faster with this new upgrade. The next area I wanna cover for the upgrade here is these tramming bolts here. And so the original Onefinity setup actually had the tramming bolts as well. Very few people actually notice this, but what these bolts allow you to do is tram the entire Y gantry back and forth. So if it is out of square, with your waste board, you can use these bolts to push the rail forward or push the rail back as required. Now these tramming bolts do not allow you to tram the machine left and right, but it does give you a certain degree of freedom here when you want to make adjustments forward and backwards. The last feature of the X50 upgrade that I want to cover is not so much a feature, but it is a design choice that makes the installation super easy. And what I mean by that is the configuration of where the ports are and how it mounts to the Y gantry is identical to the previous 35 millimeter model. And because of this, it makes the installation super easy. You simply loosen the bolts, take them out, drop this unit in, tighten them back down, plug in the connectors for the motors, just like in the previous unit, uh, and you're up and running. It takes literally less than 10 minutes to do this upgrade. So the only fidgetiness of it, if you want to call it that, is, is you do have to remove the entire Z carriage to do the migration from the smaller unit to the bigger unit. But that's very simple, but just by removing the four bolts that holds the Z carriage on, and then you can just swap it out and upgrade. So very, uh, very nice choice on uh, the part of the designers at Onefinity to make it uh, backwards compatible with the previous machine. Switching gears now to the installation process of the X50 upgrade. Started by removing the router by loosening the router plate and removing the Z-axis by removing the four bolts that hold the axis on. Then I removed the eight bolts that hold the Y gantry on and then inserted the new X50 upgrade, tightened the eight bolts back down again, and then I attached the Z-axis. In this case, it was too low, so I took it off, put it back up to the place that I wanted it, and then I reattached all the cabling, which is the same as the original. Powered it up, made sure everything moved, home the device, and then put the router back into place. Installation was super easy. I have already trammed my router using this piece of wood that you see on the wastewood here. And I got some video of me doing the process, but I think it's just gonna be easier for me to explain what I did in the process I followed rather than doing a voiceover on some uh, video where I was constantly running into the camera and also blocking the view in many cases. So how do you tram your router on one on the Onefinity machine here? Well, 
there's two steps to this process that I ended up taking. So first off, I put this wood down. I ran a surfacing operation on this wood in the horizontal direction or the X direction. And then I ran a surfacing operation in the Y direction or the vertical direction here. And so what that allowed me to do is check to see if the machine was trammed as it's going this way. It'll tell me whether or not the gantry axis here is twisted forward or back in any way. And then whenever I ran the vertical operation here, it'll tell me whether or not the gantry is twisted uh, left or right. So what I found is the gantry is perfectly perpendicular to the workpiece using the uh, horizontal operations, which means these rails are completely perpendicular to the wasteboard. However, when I ran the uh, Y operation or the vertical operation here, I did get ridges on this board right here. You can see them right here. And so what that tells me, because it is higher on this side than it is on this side, that the router was tilted a little bit this way, which means it took a little bit less material off here than it did here. So to fix the errors in tramming for my machine, I have to first start by loosening the bolts on the Z axis here, and then twist the entire assembly, in my case, to the right to take out this ridge here. And so if your machine is backwards and it's high on this side, then you would wanna twist it to the left. So after I loosened all the bolts as best as I could, one of the bolts is actually so tight that I could not get it loosened at all. But that still allowed me, by loosening all three of them, it still allowed me to twist the machine as far as I could. I reran the test and I still had these ridges. So uh, that what that tells me is there's not enough play in the Z-axis to allow me to do the adjustment alone. So what I ended up doing is shimming the router on the top right-hand side and the bottom left-hand side in this case, right? And so what that gives me is a little extra play. I use some packing tape right here, and or right here on the bottom, and then right here on the top. Two pieces of packing tape on the bottom here and then one piece on the top here gave me just enough extra twist on the router itself to compensate for the uh, degree that it was out of tram. And so what you see on the left hand side here is after I ran both a horizontal and a vertical again, it is completely smooth. There is no uh, line in either direction, which tells me that the router is completely parallel or is completely perpendicular in all directions to the surface board here that I had previously surfaced with the previous uh, Y gantry here. So what is going on with this board here? Why is it all cut out like this? Well, I'll be honest, I really don't know exactly what happened, but in short, I was surfacing this board the very first time with my Admana bit that is right here. It is one and a half inches large. And so it did a great job at surfacing it. And if you do want to get one of these, I do highly recommend them. They are quite expensive, but they are very much worth their money. I will leave a link in the description below. So the second time I wanted to surface it, I wanted to simply just rerun the previous G code that I had. So I lowered the bit a tenth of an inch, which was the amount that I was removing for the surface operation. And then I reran it. And for whatever reason, the machine dropped down almost three eighths of an inch and started removing material over here. And so I don't know what I did wrong. I'm not entirely sure what happened. I have rerun that file a number of times and it has worked fine every single time. So the only thing that I can figure is that whenever I re-zeroed this bit to the new location, I just did something crazy or inappropriate or just completely wrong and it just started removing a ton of material. It made a mess. There were chunks everywhere. And when it finally got over here, uh, when it came by for its pass, it actually got stuck and the fuse uh, that the router is connected to actually burned out, which caused the router to stop spinning. The machine kept moving, but the router stopped spinning. And so you can actually see where it gouged out here as the machine was moving, but the bit was not moving along with it. And then when it came back for the next pass right here, um, it just literally got stuck and wouldn't move any further and the machine kind of locked up and that's when I hit the stop button Otherwise known as the oh crap button right uh, stopped everything Restarted everything and so ran a couple more operations here got this uh, smooth result and so we're good to go now So I guess a little lesson learned there for me is just to double check when you re-zero your 
axes to make sure they are in the right location. So that is how you tram the Onefinity CNC machine. This process can be used for just about any CNC machine, but the details obviously will vary based on how the machine is connected to the gantries and the different adjustment points that you might have. It would be lovely in a future upgrade if Onefinity were to add the ability to tram the Z-axis in the uh, left and right direction without loosening these bolts and without shimming the router. If there was some way to uh, add some maybe tramming bolts onto the bracket here, that would be really, really, really wonderful. And I'd like to see that change made in the future, hopefully. <laughs> Well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. So the X50 upgrade here on the One Affinity, I think makes the perfect upgrade to the machine, especially for folks who are looking to get that 80 millimeter spindle for their machine. It was super easy to install, very straightforward to use, and I do highly recommend it if you get the opportunity. I would like to thank Jen and Mark over at One Affinity for sending this to me and allowing me to be a beta tester of the upgrade. I think it works very well and is definitely worth the money. Well, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for getting this far. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. If you like this specific video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below. Tell us why, and we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching the video, and don't forget to be inspired. Hi, hello, I'm... Oh, you want to play now, don't you? Come here. Come here. Come here. All right, we'll go lay down. Sit. Sit. Let's go, girl. Let's see if we can get in here. I'm skeptical. Okay, that wasn't good. <laughs>